Hey viewers, welcome to VL Astrology once again. I'm Vanita Lenka, I'm a Vedic astrologer and today I'm going to be talking about the week 13th of the year 2024. Little under the weather so I'll be sounding a little weird. My voice is really heavy because I've got cold and cough and um, I actually you know before I start this video I would request you to pray for my family, for me, for my son, for my uh, whole family you know. Uh, just a humble request um, because we all are under the weather, so I just wanted you to pray for all of us as well this week. And as you know, we are heading to the lunar eclipse and then we are heading to a solar eclipse also. So they, I think these are the side effects. And uh, this is uh, the week 13th uh, from the 25th to the 31st of March. And uh, we do have uh, a very good news that is Venus is getting exalted. And that's why I'm wearing this dress today. Uh, instead of the uh, ethnic wear that I always carry. So uh, yes, this is a very crucial week undoubtedly and we have been hearing very, very bad news um, in and around the globe, Moscow event, the incident that happened and uh, <clears throat> also, uh, you know, uh, Princess Kate also is uh, uh, diagnosed with cancer. So these are not good uh, news to, uh, you know, uh, listen to and hear about. So we are going through a lot and in and around eclipses time, we hear all of these news even more. And uh, Venus is getting exalted though, but it is going to be conjunct Rahu. So uh, Rahu is also, you know, we uh, hear about, uh, you know, uh, uh, whenever we talk about cancer, cancer like, uh, uh, you know, disease. So we uh, see it from Rahu and Venus is uh, inching from uh, Saturn's grip to Rahu's grip. So it is also, uh, you know, indicative that female counterparts will experience uh, these kind of uh, diagnosis or will go through these kind of um, health issues. So I would request you to go for your health checks, you know, um, uh, from time to time. Don't ignore uh, because whenever Venus is conjunct Rahu, these kind of news we do hear. So you should not ignore, if at all your Venus Dasha is on, Venus is afflicted, especially. So the initial part, you know, I wanted to forewarn you for that reason only. And uh, <clears throat> of course, <clears throat> I'm on the recovering side. Yesterday when I did the live session, you know, I was really unwell that time also. But today, you know, I am much better. And uh, of course, I, uh, as I requested, pray for my family. So yes, so today I'm going to be talking about a lot of uh, important events in this week because Mercury is also going to be in Gandanta. Then it's going to be moving into Aries and will be coming back to Pisces and then will be moving back to Aries, back and forth because of retrogression next week. So we all must actually be very careful uh, in around these energies because, you know, I have seen... Um, you know, uh, any kind of uh, uh, natural calamities also take place even more when there are eclipses times. And new moon, full moons are always those kinds of energies. And Rahu Ketu are really, you know, the powerful energies because they are going to be eclipsing sun and moon. So they're going to be definitely, you know, uh, giving some impact on these areas wherever they are in your personal chart and in and around the globe also. We'll be hearing, you know, uh, it, it, uh, you know, our, uh, on the global level also, we'll be hearing some, uh, you know, news related to these zones even more. Okay, so, um, uh, so what exactly is this week about? I'll be sharing the insights on the same, and then I will be taking up the sign wise predictions in the letter segment. So stay tuned, and uh, do let me know if at all you have any questions in the comment section. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe the channel because, you know, um, people are watching, but they are, I think, going away without subscribing because I'm not putting up any, uh, you know, uh, logo or any any kind of text message around that, you know, please subscribe, please subscribe. So I request you all to subscribe the channel as well if you really want this channel to grow and I uh, keeping me motivated also. Though I am motivated any which way because I love astrology so much that nothing can demotivate me. But yes, uh, it will be good if this kind of a knowledge can spread across the globe and to the maximum. So do share the channel and the videos so that they can also get some benefit out of this channel. So let me start with the 
sharing of the weeklies, what exactly is happening in the upcoming week. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you so much for the fa uh, you know fa family prayers. Uh, people have started to uh, pour in their messages and prayers as well. Om Gangan Pataya Namo Namaha. For sure, this is a very powerful uh, mantra. So uh, this week, Moon is going to be transiting three zodiac signs of Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio. In Virgo, this uh, is going to be from 24th afternoon and uh, is going to be conjunct Ketu uh, till the 26th and is going to be opposite Mercury and Sun also. Mercury is going to be in Gandanta as you can see on this very particular day because it's at 29 degrees as you can see. And then, you know, when Mercury is going to be out of this, then it is going to be in Gandanta for another day because it's going to be in Ashwini Nakshatra in Aries sign. So uh, Mercury's nakshatra and, uh, uh, you know, Revati and Ashwini, this is the transition time. And it's going to be coming out of the Pisces sign, uh, sign of debility also. But little precarious as far as market is concerned, share market, etc. is concerned. So this is not considered to be a good time phase. Then we have Moon transiting through the sign of Libra and is going to be from 27 to the 29th afternoon and it's going to be opposite Jupiter, uh, as you can see, right opposite in mutual aspect to Jupiter and Mercury will also be here. So it will be opposite Mercury as well. And it's going to be in trine to these planets because it's in the same element. So we do see the trines also. So this moon is going to be in trying to Venus, Saturn and Mars. So these are all volatile energies, you know, that is why we are experiencing. I have been harping on this, that there will be some uh, some terrorist attacks or some natural calamities that we can experience with all this, what is happening. And uh, of course, uh, we have uh, moon transiting through its sign of debility on the 29th letter half till the 31st. And it's going to be uh, aspected by Rahu and Saturn also. As you know, Scorpio sign is also undergoing a lot of turmoil and, uh, you know, a lot of energy. So uh, definitely it is uh, going to get better once Jupiter transits through the Taurus sign. So a few days to go. Um, now here, what is happening? Mercury is in Gandanta, as I said, and we have Venus's ingress in the uh, sign of uh, Pisces on the 31st and till the 24th of April Venus is going to be in exaltation place but we do have a lunar eclipse which is taking place in this axis of uh, Virgo and Pisces now uh, lunar eclipse is uh, on the full moon night uh, because uh, it is a uh, lunar eclipse so lunar means moon and uh, solar means sun so when there is a sun and moon together in the horoscope, when you simply, simply you can see if they are together uh, with Rahu or Ketu, then this is a solar eclipse. But when they are opposite each other, uh, moon is either with the Ketu or Rahu, then this is a lunar eclipse. So <clears throat> wherever it is nighttime, it will be taking place there. Uh, so uh, the parts of, uh, you know, uh, it's it's going to be towards the west of the world where the eclipse is going to be visible more. Uh, so this is a very uh, precarious kind of, a, uh, you know, uh, eclipse also because it is going to be in moon's nakshatra. So it's going to be more the energy. I'm not uh, uh, scaring you all, but surely this is going to be bringing about some major transitions in the market trends because this is a Virgo. Virgo is a sign of healing also, health also. So we must definitely take good care of our health, our mental health as well. Our dreams will be actually playing out a very important role during this time. So we must uh, take um, into account the nitty gritties also, whatever is happening in your life you know you should be more receptive to that and your uh you know you will be having a lot of desires and uh restlessness also in and around this time period uh, but surely something new some some different uh things are going to come up as well during this time period so be careful <clears throat> and uh it's not going to be a long lasting uh impact uh and uh because uh, it depends on the duration of the eclipse. If the duration of eclipse is very long, 
then uh, it's directly proportional. Suppose it's three hours, so it's uh, going to be impacting for three months. If it's a one hour, then at least for one month, the impact is there. So that is how you see the eclipses and you capture the time periods that way, okay? So that's what, and uh, uh, as far as the remedies, you know, during this time period is concerned, you must actually donate something in the morning. You must uh, use holy basil during the time period when the eclipse is going on, you know, that's what we do in our country in India. Uh, my grandmother has taught me, you know, she used to spread uh, in the food items, anything which is, uh, which is consumable, you know, she used to spread uh, or drop all the, you know, she used to plug the, the holy basil and she used to just put it everywhere so that you know the because the eclipse's time is considered to be a poisonous time that is why the uh, temples are also shut and then everything is to be cleaned again and the cleanliness part is definitely because you know you sprinkle um i've seen people sprinkling uh ganga jal or any holy water as well uh and then um we take bath after the eclipse gets over actually you know that's what is the ritual that we follow and we cleanse ourselves and our our house also. Nowadays, people have not uh, been following all these rituals, but there is a meaning to it. There is something which is attached to all these stories that we have been hearing. So, uh, because, you know, these are all uh, rays, the ultraviolet rays or what, I don't know the scientific terms, but surely there are some rays that actually, you know, get blocked or they get uh, generated. And that is how, you know, something which is, you know, not very, it's, it's not very, um, uh, favorable it's not a, a very healthy phenomena which is going to take place scientifically also so we must actually uh, cleanse ourselves okay even if you know your the eclipse is not visible in your country but astro astrologically it is going to be impacting everyone so we must cleanse ourselves we must look uh, after our health during this time eating habits because you know what happens we actually tend to eat heavy foods. And this is uh, the time period when we should just, you know, eat light, sleep on time, rest, be rested. Uh, mantras, definitely people chant mantras also during this time. Some people meditate. It said that don't ask for any wishes because, you know, we, even the devatas are in their, uh, you know, they, they've shut the doors, the temples are shut. So it's not advisable to ask for any wish fulfillment. Rather, you can just simply just pray, offer your prayers and just do for people uh, instead, you know, and donate. Uh, so that's the reason, you know, the next morning we used to donate whatever, you know, we uh, we had the food grains or something, uh, you know, rice, et cetera, or food articles. We used to donate at that time. We do it right now in during this time period as well, we'll be doing. So you can also try it out, okay? Now, <clears throat> starting with the uh, predictions part. Okay, I must tell you that Mercury is going to be in Gandanta uh, because Mercury is going to be uh, transiting through the Aries sign on the 26th March till the 9th of April. So 25th, 26th, 27th, Mercury is going to be in Gandanta. So when Mercury is in Gandanta, anything to do with your examination, competition, or uh, you know education, or we can say... Uh, market shares crypto etc you know these areas suffer or they can be some transitions we can uh, you know hear even more business uh, business proposals might just you know you have on the on the worldly plane you know we will hear more that you know the market crashed or businesses are not doing well or something we'll hear some news in and around this time and then mercury goes retrograde also so uh, maybe, you know, your uh, gadgets crash out or something to do with the, you know, technology uh, glitches can happen even more with this transition from water to the, uh, the electrifying sign or 5D sign of Aries. So these kind of things can happen. Even, uh, you know, the hack hackers can be on the go. So be careful about your uh, accounts, bank accounts, etc. you know. So you have to be very cautious during this Mercury's because Mercury with Rahu, of course, is a, uh, uh, the hacking uh, thing, you know, just aggravates. But when it is in transition, any which ways it's going to be for two, two, three days. So we have to be a little extra vigilant and extra careful. Okay, no harm. Now, these predictions are as per the ascendant moon sign or the Dasha wise because Dasha, of course, is or I would not say you should hear from Dasha, Antra Dasha also, because that's what is going to be actually helping you understand your personal chart, what exactly is happening in your life right now. 
So you can easily uh, pick up your, uh, you know, any of the software, you can just erect this chart and then, you know, you will get to know uh, where your where AS is written is your ascendant, where MO is written is your moon, where the Vimashottari Dasha is written is your Dasha. So if it's a long Dasha of Jupiter, then you should go to the Antra Dasha also. Suppose Jupiter is in Libra sign in your natal chart. So make that natal chart, your Libra sign, your first house, and then rotate your chart, your birth chart, then superimpose the transit positions over that. That is how you should see, actually. So your natal chart will also change, no? Because the dasha has changed. Dasha changes, people change, right? So that's how, you know, we interpret. So it is very, very essential if you change the horoscope and rotate it and see where the planetary positions are. Suppose you are in the dasha of Jupiter and from Jupiter, you know, you have a, um, a Venus uh, in, in your natal chart in your second house. So uh, things are going to be different now. Uh, you know, like if it is Aries, then it, it becomes the eighth house. But when you make Jupiter your first house, then uh, Venus is in the second house, isn't it? So that's how, you know, you have to see, not in the eighth house. So things will change and things will be better, of course. So for Aries natives, how is this week going to be, which is uh, a little tough week for everyone because we are heading to eclipses and we are heading to uh, Gandanta Mercury and uh, Mars is going to be also, you know, sort of inching towards Saturn. So <clears throat> thankfully you have a Jupiter, beautiful Jupiter sitting in your first house. So this is a big time saving grace. We are having your, the eclipse is going to be taking place in your, uh, uh, in your sixth house. And uh, I have already made a video on the same. Please do watch that video also because uh, it's important to see the uh, these kind of videos to know more. So you have to take care of your health, your routine, your digestion, organize everything, tidy your place and uh, declutter uh, or unclutter your surroundings. If at all, you are going to be changing your routine, things are going to get better for you. And uh, if at all, you have any kind of uh, complications with your co uh, co-workers, your partners, your business uh, teams, etc. You know, you are thinking of expansion, etc. So this is uh, from the 24th afternoon to the 26th, this theme is going to be playing out even more. So you must actually take good care of your health. And uh, if at all, you have to go in for any of kind of checkups, you should do that as well. And of course, uh, uh, Sun is going to be with Rahu in the 12th house. So, you know, you, you will be performing some spiritual activities. You might be just uh, taking some travels to the religious places. Energies are towards inwards, actually. Whenever uh, the eclipses are uh, in the six and 12 axes and you must actually you know uh, be cautious about the people who are conspiring against you they can be that people are actually there are hidden enemies there are hidden diseases that you don't know so the diagnosis is difficult so now you will get that diagnosis also this week especially and then moon is going to be in your libra sign and that's going to be from 27th <coughs> excuse me to the 29th afternoon so it is going to be right opposite jupiter and mercury and it's going to be in trying to Venus, Saturn and Mars. So this uh, moon is going to be actually, you know, whenever it's uh, Mars also, Saturn also. So this is a very, uh, you know, you can be very assertive. You can be very in much involved in your family affairs, in your business. You can have intense desires. You can be a little more emotional and volatile as well at the same time. So you need to be more pro proactive. You need to address your emotional needs and your partner's needs also. And this will bring about some, uh, you know, emotional receptivity, innovation, independence, and uh, you might just be uh, too, um, uh, you know, you at times what happens, there are some insecurities that we all go through. So this might be the day, you know, you feel quite down and out. So you need to take care of your emotional setup yourself. Nobody else can help you more than you yourself. So you need to be cautious about all of that. You might just because of this, you know, spend some extra money on aesthetics or buying beauty products, et cetera, you know, because you are more in, uh, you know, that zone, uh, depressive zone or something. You know, what happens uh, sometimes we need that rent. So we just go for uh, shopping, et cetera, you know, so that can be the day. So you need to keep a constant check on these emotions because it should not lead to uh, you overspending and over indulging as well. So this is uh, also about uh, getting involved in some intimate relationship and it can intensify your, uh, you know, relationship that way. 
and uh, Ketu is transiting your uh, sixth house as well. So you need to take care of your relationship any which ways because it's in the 12th places away from the seventh house. So this leads to withdrawal symptoms. You know, you're not getting involved in the relationship that uh, that way. But Jupiter, thankfully, is looking here. So this is definitely going to save and protect your relationship very well. And emotional fulfillment is definitely dependent on your harmony and your cordiality with your partner. And lastly, moon will be in your 8th house on the 29th letter half till the 31st. And it's going to be affected by Rahu and Saturn here as well. See, 8th house is a very uh, intense kind of uh, placement of moon, Chandrashtama, as we say. So this brings about a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, mismanagement or mood swings or, you know, making wrong decisions and choices. You have to be careful about that. There can be some confused state of mind which can lead to wrong decision making because Rahu is also looking here during this time especially. So you need to um, be more, you know, uh, you, you need to focus on things which are or prioritize actually, you know, whatever you want to do first. So you, you must prioritize. Uh, see to it that you are not making uh, that a uh, haste in making the, a particular decision. It might be because of this Rahu energy looking here or Saturn energy looking here. So you need to confront and uh, uh, be strong and the, the hidden fears that you're going through, you need to work on them as well. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and also, you know, here when we talk about Saturn energy, so you must be very disciplined and be more responsible Take the responsibility of whatever you're doing. And, you know, you should actually uh, accept your mood swings as well. You must accept that you are also on the wrong or you can do something wrong as well, rather than putting all the blame on to somebody else. This is what Chandrashtama does, actually. You know, you, you don't realize what you're doing. Take good care of your mother's health. Maybe you'll be connecting with your mother, with your family during this time period, and you're going to be... Uh, maybe traveling also, uh, something to do with your uh, homeland or your, uh, you know, your place where you live. There can be some complications here and there, there, there as well. Maybe you're construct constructing or renovating or redoing your place and then there is a halt because of something. And uh, we do have Holi. I wish you all a ha very happy Holi as well. Uh, let me write it here because I forgot to write it on the top of the, uh, so... Happy Holi, everyone. Uh, so this is something, you know, which uh, this is a festival of colors. It unites us. So definitely a very beautiful time period for that reason also. The festivities definitely are reminder calls that, you know, we, uh, the, the you know, good always wins and the evil always loses. But I know uh, people are dying. People are struggling. People are going through a lot because of this war, et cetera. But we all have a positive uh, you know, uh, thankfully that we can pray, we can uh, pray for the peace uh, and uh, for the world in totality, you know, we can all come together collectively and pray. So that is something, you know, these festivals remind us that, you know, there is this divine who exists, who can help us all. Okay, so we must actually you know, surrender at times, you know, surrendering also is very difficult, but you know, we must Okay, so this is what the week looks like. And um, you have your third and the sixth Lord in Gandanta. Uh, Mercury is debilitated. And I must tell you that, you know, on the, uh, uh, especially 26th to the 9th of April, Mercury is going to be in Aries, Navmansha also. So you might just be going in for some, uh, you know, communication skill enhancement during this time. It's a good idea. And uh, your connection uh, with people might just improve also. You know, you might just come across people who are going to be helping you in the future. So I'm just uh, giving all the planetary positions and their connection with this moon in this up upcoming week. So it's not just confined to moon's movement and I put an end. No, the, the whole uh, planetary position actually, you know, has to be combined when you're giving the readings. And... Um, we do have, uh, uh, you know, uh, 25th to the 28th uh, could be the time period when you are, you're uh, going in for some examination, you're traveling overseas. And if you're traveling, just uh, take care of your uh, belongings, your passport, your visa, etc. You know, you just take care of your belongings. 
uh, 29 to the 31st would be uh, a good time period to uh, finish off the goals that you've set at the workplace. Some new projects will be coming in or starting. So you're going to be quite on your toes this week. Okay, coming to the next sign that is. One second. Okay. That is Taurus. So for Taurus natives, this week moon is going to be transiting your <coughs> excuse me. A moon is going to be transiting your fifth, sixth, and seventh houses. Um, fifth house is the house of uh, creativity, romance. And uh, this is also about your inclination towards leisure activities. Maybe you will be uh, getting to spiritual, especially, you know, some mantras, the etc. You know, people start doing chanting mantras. So that is from 24th afternoon to the 26th of uh, March. And we have an eclipse also in this uh, zone in Hastanakshatra. So you might just be using your hands in, uh, you know, uh, in playing instruments or something that you really like doing. You will be more focused on that during this time. Maybe you, you will be getting inclined to connect with children, playful activities, fun activities. And this can give you that comfort zone. You know, you're more involved in uh, your, uh, your, see, when you, when you are unwinding, you're actually, you know, giving more attention to your own self. So you're pursuing your hobbies, you're enjoying your job, whatever you're doing. Uh, Ketu is there. So you will become very serious in whatever you're doing also. So you will enjoy that excitement will be there, that emotional fulfillment you will definitely be feeling during this time. And uh, okay. Uh, so yeah. So this is what, you know, um, uh, on the 24th to the 26th of uh, March uh, is the is the theme going to play out and we do have Mercury and Sun right opposite this moon as well so maybe some connection with your friends family you know there are festival this holy also so you might just be going in for some uh, collective you know gatherings and you might just enjoy that as well it is quite uh, sad that you know people are not enjoying the way we used to you know in our uh, youth because you know we used to really you know uh, go and see the Holika Dahan also, you know, we used to go and, uh, you know, um, hear the, listen to the story uh, attached to this. And then we used to, you know, go to our friends' places and never used to uh, do all the ruckus and all the uh, hua la that, you know, is happening around these days. So it used to be a very simple kind of a festival, but enjoyment used to be attached to it, fulfilling, you know, we used to feel very uh, we used to look forward to it nowadays you know uh, nobody feels safe you know people drink and drive and they do what what not they do you know so this is something that uh, has actually you know spoiled everything the the flavor of holi but yes people do have it peacefully also there are certain communities you know i have seen who have close communities and they really have they really enjoy also it's not that uh, that everything is uh, bad or everything is hunky dory but still it's uh, definitely, you know, there are certain people who are really enjoying these festivals. Actually, they know the theme as well. So let's enjoy, get together and, you know, just enjoy this uh, time period. Then moon is going to be uh, from 27 to the 29th afternoon um, in Libra sign in your sixth house. And sixth house is, you know, the house of routines. You're going to be focusing more on your health, how you can improvise and, you know, how you can uh, be more uh, uh, you know, productive during this time period. So you're going to be spending more time on your routine jobs, uh, connecting with your people around you. It's a good transit for you in case you're thinking of any change also, change of residence, change of job, etc. You know, there can be that getting active as well. Uh, and uh, it's right opposite Jupiter after all here, you know, uh, from the 12th house. So you can be traveling overseas as well this week. And it's uh, a good time to go for a vacation as well. Venus, Saturn, uh, Mars are in trine from the 10th house. So this is also indicative of something uh, which is going to be changing your uh, you know, um, uh, career plan or you're going to be changing or looking forward to some connections, new connections also, uh, investors coming in and you know, Saturn, Mars are in the Kendra, Venus is in the Kendra. It's a good, good um, combination, you know, with good yoga, which is forming in the Kendra. Because it's the trine and the 
you know, Kendra connections as well. We should not forget uh, uh, that. So uh, it's a good, good one. Uh, Sasi Yoga is forming as well. So you are already very serious and very uh, hardworking kinds during this time period. You're thinking of expansion also. So all of that is actually playing out well with this moon's ingress in the trying to these planets. So, so every month, you know, whatever your stuck up energies are, whatever stuck up jobs are, they start getting momentum the moment moon transits here. So moon activates those areas which are stagnant because moon is the swiftest because you would not get the dasha of all the planets like, you know, uh, every day or every two quarter days. So something has to activate if there is a promise which is there, you know. So Dasha activates and then you, your moon transit activates certain things which are very uh, important and uh, which really need that push. Moon is going to be in your seventh house on the 29th, letter half till the 31st, and it's going to be aspected by Rahu and Saturn here. So this is uh, the seventh house is about relationship, your partnership business. So you might just have a strong desire of companionship. You might just come across somebody, but you're confused whether I should go ahead with this uh, relationship or not but you are going to be having a lot of <coughs> excuse me your your in, emotions are going to be you know uh, very uh, uh, hype uh, hyped up or maybe hyper also maybe you're going to be thinking of uh, a fulfilling and a harmonious relationship and you know you want to reconcile with your partner but Rahu and Saturn are not letting you do that Saturn is disciplined of course but it restricts you you know it just wants you to do things which are uh, you know, uh, which isolates you from a particular zone. So, so does Ketu. So, uh, Saturn is not going to be giving you that intimate relationship, maybe, but Rahu does. Uh, there can be some confused state of mind. You need to really figure that out yourself, what is happening in your life. But yes, there is something that you can, you know, work on. Uh, if at all you want to reconcile. So this is a good time period. If you want to get investors, this is a good time period. So 29th, a letter half in the 31st is a good time period to do so. And 26 to the 28th, you might just go for some checkups or some, you know, changes in your, uh, you know, pers personality, some hair hairdo or buying something for yourself, you know, to maybe cosmetics or something which, you know, up uplifts you, <laughs> your mood uplifts. So that is something from 26 to 28, you might be just going for some shopping. 29th to 31st, you might be just communicating, you might be just meeting your people around you, your family members, you're working through your finances, some money which you're stuck up now, you will get it. So maybe some loans you're going to be repaying as well. So this is a good time period from 29th to the 31st. We are heading to this Venus exaltation, though I will be making a separate video of the same, of course, it requires attention because this is going to be in Rahu Ketu axis. But Venus's exaltation is definitely very positive for you. We are heading to it from 31st of March till the 24th of, 24th of April. So this will enhance your relationship. This will uh, bring about the community closer to you. You have to be uh, cautious about what you convey to others because it might just be that you are not going to be getting those kinds of friends in your life uh, that you are expecting to be. So maybe because of your own uh, self-created problems, they just push you. You're just pushing them away, or they just leave you and go. Could be, you know, either or. Coming to the next sign, that is <clears throat> Gemini. <clears throat> So for Gemini natives, this week moon is going to be in your fourth, fifth, and sixth houses. And on the um, <clears throat> 24th afternoon till the 26th, sorry about my throat, I'm so sorry. I know it is very irritating, uh, you know, uh, constantly when I'm doing, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. But you know, I, how committed I am, uh, everybody was telling me not to do this video, not to do video today don't go live but you know I'm so committed I just uh, I was so uneasy if I don't do the weeklies I will not be able to sleep well tonight so um, 24th afternoon till the 26th moon is going to be in your fourth house and uh, fourth house is a zone where mercury exalts actually you know when moon transits there your thought process goes uh, you know towards acquiring knowledge education you want to think of bigger things you want to go for those uh, goal achievements also you know your you, you your aspirations suddenly you know they start growing 
and you're very homey kinds you know you want to be at home you want to contemplate on things which can you know uplift you and uh, growth and uh, you know prosperity and all those things you know is the theme emotional fulfillment comes from creating a safe and a comfortable home environment but there's an eclipse waiting there you know moon is going to be in hasta nakshatra and there's an eclipse on the 25th so you need to be really very careful about your mental setup because this can lead to some complications in your relationships as well. Because fourth house, you know, whenever there's an eclipse, it actually reveals a lot many things, you know, related to your uh, relationships at the home front. There can be some, uh, you know, clearing of old and welcoming the new energies because it's a lunar eclipse after all. Involvement with caretaking, security, nourishing, nurturing, cooking, feeding others. All these, you know, uh, would be playing out during this time period. And also, you know, the uh, childhood memories, maybe you will be thinking too much about your childhood days. You might just connect with your friends or maybe somebody who is, you know, in your vicinity somebody who's very close to you might just come into your life during this time again so uh, that's how you know it works and uh, moon triggers all of these and lunar eclipse also does that and you are as as it is having holy uh, happy holy to everyone uh, in and around uh, uh, india or, or across the globe you know wherever uh, you all celebrate so wishing you all a very happy holy and uh moon is going to be in libra sign on the 27th to the 29th afternoon uh, opposite jupiter and mercury and then trying to venus saturn and mars so in the fifth house you know the theme is that you're going to be connecting with children creativity you're going to be following your uh, you know your heart what your heart wants to do you will be following that and it's uh, really required also sometimes you need to unwind and you want to connect with your own self you want to go for recreational activities you want to be more involved in leisure activities you want to pursue your hobby so all that will be the theme and uh, you might just go for some shopping also quite possible and uh, you can start with a romance or romantic uh, you know, uh, relationship during this time, or you're going to be reconciling with your partner. If at all, you have ha had any, uh, you know, any kind of problem uh, in the relationship. But if at all, you are solo, so this might just be that you're con connecting with your own people around you, family. So the near and the dear ones, you'll be connecting. Uh, 29th letter half till the 31st, uh, Moon is going to be in Scorpio sign where moon debilitates and it's a sixth house energy. Sixth house energy is a very, um, you know, is, is, is a very intense en energy as well because it's about, you know, your health, your routines, your uh, productivity, your hidden enemies. Uh, hidden enemies we see from the 12th house though, but competitors we see from here. If you have any competitors, if you have any, uh, you know, uh, health issues till now, so you will be, uh, you know, working on all those areas. Uh, it might just give you some health issues also. Connection with your uh, uncles or aunts might just, you know, uh, be the theme. Or maybe they will visit you. You will visit them. Could be. And this will prompt you to self-care. You must take care of yourself. You must take care of your uh, wellness practices. You know, you should follow all of that. You should actually work on your, um, uh, your fitness regime, you know, and the diet regime. So you can start a diet plan if you don't, if at all you have to during this time period. And because here Rahu and Saturn are also looking here, you must actually take good care of your health as well. Uh, go for the checkups. Don't ignore. And also, you know, this can be the time period that you're going to be, uh, you know, going in for some litigation or, you know, because of your financial uh, some kind of financial uh, tussle that you're going through. So this might just be the, uh, that you're going to be, uh, you know, going in for some litigation and you're going to be getting some verdict also. Okay. So that's what is going to be the theme. And uh, um, yes, um, there will be some new friends coming in, new relationships starting, or there can be some new business proposals you'll be getting. Mercury is turning retrograde next week. So you must plan everything really well convey uh conveying others what uh you know about business about your investments etc etc if you have to you know you just take the help and the advice of the experts before jumping into it uh it might just uh, give you some delays and frustrations if you are under uh you know uh 
uh, if you're making your house or construction or renovation is going on or something in and around your home environment, you know, any changes if you are anticipating. So this might just be a little frustrating or maybe retrograde will give you a quick start and it'll uh, actually uh, make things faster. Okay. Just take care of your gadgets um, and uh, your bank accounts also. Keep uh, keep a constant check on your uh, bank uh, accounts as well. Okay. Uh, coming to the next sign that is cancer. <clears throat> so for cancer natives, this week moon is going to be transiting your third, fourth and fifth houses. So third house is the house of short travels, communication, intellectual pursuits. Uh, you will feel a strong uh, need to connect with your siblings or engage with your local activities. This might just in, enhance your mental agility, your curiosity. You know, people I have seen, they are they get involved in uh, writing or, you know, if they are cooking. So they are just, you know, upskilling themselves during this time period. So when there is a lunar eclipse, your inclinations might just be towards more spiritual, you know, they will, because Ketu is there, Hasta, Hasta is hand. So you might just be cooking. So it could be that, you know, you're making something which is uh, going uh, like uh, something very holy, you know, something very, uh, uh, we call it Prasad, you know, the uh, that we uh, we take uh, once, you know, if there is a ceremony or any auspicious event that takes, takes place or a puja takes place. So we have prasadam. So we do that. So uh, maybe you're going to be making some prasad. There is some, act, uh, you know, religious activity or ceremony which is going to be taking place in the home. Uh, homeum is taking place, you know, you're doing some homeum also. So third house, these are all third house activities. So you will feel quite emotionally fulfilling, you know, you you will feel that fulfillment, you will come across some learning ideas, you know, stimulating conversations might take place. Or it could be that you're going to be getting involved in some religious act or activities. So this is a very good start of the week, but there are eclipses, we have Holi also. So maybe you're going to be enjoying, uh, you know, Holi festival, people are coming in and you're going to be having a good get together. Also, uh, you know, you must also understand that this um, eclipse is going to be in your third house. So while traveling, you have to be careful, you know, and uh, if you're going in for visa, PR, etc. during this upcoming week, so Make sure that everything is intact. Get into the depth and the details. K2 is details also. So get into the depth and the detail of everything, what you're writing, how you're filling up your form, etc. So take good care, okay? Then moon is going to be in your fourth house and that's from the 27th to the 29th afternoon. And it's going to be right opposite Jupiter and Mercury and it's going to be in trying to Venus, Mars and Saturn. So that's the time period, you know, when you will, uh, you want to be uh, more, uh, emotional, uh, emotionally attached to your family security. You're more involved in the family environment. You know, maybe you have traveled a lot. Now you want to come home and you want to rest. So that is the energy that is going to be the uh, will be flowing during this time period. And uh, of course, Jupiter is also there, so you will uh, experience a lot of peace at home as well. So some emotional fulfillment comes from you know uh, creating a safe and a comfortable home environment so you will be connecting with your mom with your family members you'll be communicating with them as well and purchasing of properties buying a vehicle all those are also on your mind so you might just be going in for some new changes new things uh, that you're going to be buying during this time period as well and uh, moon is going to be in your uh, fifth house on the 29th letter half till the 31st aspected by rahu and saturn so <laughs> must be careful about uh, you know uh, because it's the fifth house, so you need to pay attention to your children because Rahu is uh, in trying into this house. So you have to be careful about your, uh, you know, too much of uh, inclination towards uh, your hobbies, leisure activities. You have to have a demarcation. Uh, this is something which can lead to some kind of complications, you know, in your relationship because of this confused state of mind or children are having some confused state of mind. You need to just help them out. So just be there, you know, just be by them, you know, so that you can also support them and they can also uh, be, uh, you know, comfortable in and around you. So that support is required rather than just rebuking them, just telling them that you're not going to listen to them or there are, you know, that parenting. Nowadays, parents I have seen have become very sensible, but uh, it, it never 
used to happen a few years back, you know, people didn't know how to go ahead with the right kind of parenting. But nowadays people are uh, quite, I've seen, you know, parents have become very sensitive to all of these. So this is something which is going to give you some creativity. Maybe you're going to be writing something or you're going to be journaling or you're going to be enjoying life pleasures also with your kids maybe or with your romantic partner or you're going to be coming across a romantic partner or an ex-partner because Rahu energy is also there. So ex-partner can come into your life during this time period. So you need to be a little more, uh, you know, uh, sensitive and uh, uh, approachable. So see to it that you handle things well this week and uh, good for your work, good for your job, not good for your litigation, etc. Not a good time to go in for filing those, uh, you know, uh, lawsuits or suing somebody or if you want to sue someone. So this is not the right time period. If you are thinking of starting something new, venturing something new, so this might be a kickstart, but I prefer that once Mercury turns direct, you should start anything new and different at that time. So signing of contracts will also be the uh, important, uh, you know, um, um, uh, events during this, this week. Some signing of contract is also going to take place. Take care of your health. Coming to the next sign, that is Leo. So for Leo natives, this week, moon is going to be transiting your second, third and fourth houses. And moon in the second house being the 12th Lord. So there can be some expenditures in and around your home, environment, family. You might just be, you know, getting involved in uh, purchasing, overspending something, over purchasing something which you really didn't want. It is something that you have to take care of from the 24th afternoon to the 26th. You might just be feeling these energies. You are going to be prompting to reevaluate your financial uh, priorities and budgeting. You know, you are going to be more... Um, uh, you know, in and around your family, you're taking their help, you're taking their advice during this time period as well. So this is a good uh, way of co communicating, you know, uh, discussing your state right now. If at all you have a bad state of affairs, you know, financially, because Ketu is transiting your second house, expenditures are rising. So this might just be a day when you feel a little uncomfortable about your, uh, you know, insecurities are in and around your financials. Oh, I've spent a lot and, you know, how will I manage? All those energies might just aggravate during the eclipses time. Uh, uh, it's also the time period that you should connect with uh, your family members. Take the support. Don't uh, sulk or don't uh, keep on thinking about things which, you know, um, you, you're hiding from your family. It's better that you tell them and share with them the, your problems and what you're going through. Uh, so I would uh, not, uh, don't bottle it up. Then it becomes a problem. Uh, moon is going to be transiting your third house and third house is the house of communication intellect you are going to be more involved in your siblings affairs you're going to be maybe uh, connecting with your family members or your siblings neighbors etc you know your community that community that you move around in so you might feel a strong um, urge to connect with them so when moon is in the in your third house and here moon is going to be from 27 to the 29th of afternoon and it's going to be opposite Mercury and Jupiter and trying to Venus, Saturn and Mars also. So uh, you can see so many planets are emitting the energy on your uh, on the Libra sign. So this is the time period that you should actually uh, consider it to be emotionally fulfilling kind of a phase. And you will learn more. You will be able to um, grasp the energies, something which is very, uh, very different, stimulating, you know. So this is, to, when there is a, uh, you know, in, in a particular area, there's a lot of energy, you know, flowing. So you learn a lot also, you know, you feel uh, very strong in that area because all the planets are emitting the energies, you know, so all the areas are being taken care of in a way. So your emotional area, your personal area, your financial area. So people will come and help. Support will come to you. But you need to be very wise. You need to be, uh, you know, uh, learning, sharing your ideas. Uh, be more caring towards others as well. Okay. Moon is going to be in Scorpio sign on the 29th letter half till the 31st. And it's going to be aspected by Rahu and Saturn in the Scorpio sign of yours in the fourth house. So the 12th Lord is going to be transferring your 
fourth house. So maybe you will be connecting with your home, homeland, your family. Emphasis is on the home, uh, home, uh, you know, uh, environment. You feel the desire to nurture and protect your loved ones, uh, but emotions are too high, too much because it is also in uh, the Scorpio sign. Not to forget that where moon debilitates. So. Uh, so this is something, you know, which will give you a desire for connecting with your family members, emotional fulfillment. You you have that urge or maybe you're feeling very uneasy because of that, that you're not able to or there's a fight or argument or a quarrel in the family and you're quite detached and you're having a lot of mood swings, you're uneasy. So that is also going to make you a little uncomfortable, but you're going to be uh, thinking about your family during this time. You're thinking about your assets. You're thinking about your vehicle. You're thinking about changing your these things. Maybe addition in the property. You know, you're just thinking and contemplating depending on your own personal charts. So anything can trigger during this time. And it can also be uh, a concern for your job change. Maybe, you know, you're going to be thinking of going overseas. You want to uh, travel overseas or you want to quit this current job and you want to travel for work or a business so you're thinking about all those things during this week and it is definitely going to be very positive if you make the right kind of decisions by the end of the week not immediately just hang on uh 25th to the 28th is the time period when you will have a uh, lot of inclination towards uh, uh your you know your creative pursuits you want to you want to really do something uh and think differently and uh, something very, uh, you know, unconventional. Think out of the box. If you're thinking of solutions, uh, solutions will not be um, very uh, straightforward. They will be like, you know, something very different. So you will get the solution, but between 25th and 28th, if you're waiting for something. So that is a very important and a crucial time period. And then, you know, of course, you need to follow your diet. If you're into sports, go for a walk, join that sports activity you have not done from a long time. Just pay attention to your health uh, between 29 to the 31st, okay? Venus is going to get exalted in the 8th house. So, of course, I'll be making a separate uh, video on the same. But 8th house energy is about relationship, intimacy. Maybe you'll be connecting with your partner or you'll be uh, hyperactive or some revelations will be made. You will be very creative also. So, you need to uh, focus more on your uh, your intense intensity towards your work, towards your job, towards your acquiring of more assets and uh, your uh, financial growth when Venus is in the eighth house. Okay, so all that is, I think it, it's a good week for you. I would say coming to the next sign that is Virgo. <clears throat> One sec. Okay, for Virgo natives, uh, this week, moon is going to be in your first, second, and third houses. So in the first house, you know, uh, there's an eclipse also taking place in your first house in the one seven axis. So it's said that, you know, whenever there are eclipses, some major changes take place. So it could be about your physical uh, appearance. It could be about your emotional setup. You can be, uh, you know, more involved in uh, self-care and other people's emotional uh, you know, um, well-being, you're going to be very caring kinds with moon uh, in the first house. You might just help others, you know, you might just donate something. You might just meet some, uh, you know, go and meet some old age people or orphans, you know, during this time period. Uh, so this is a very, um, to start with, a very intense kind of a beginning. Uh, as it is Ketu is there, Rahu is in the seventh house. So you're already having some uh, you know, relationship issues to deal with. And this is from the 24th afternoon till the 26th when moon is going to be with Ketu. You may feel more sensitive and how others perceive you. Your partner might become very, uh, you know, uh, self-centric or maybe just uh, aloof, you know, just not or too much of expectations <clears throat> from the partner's side. 
So you are trying to balance everything. If you're solo, so you're just thinking about how you can just rectify things, make things better. Uh, and the energy flow should be towards peace. Moon is going to be in the second house on the 27th uh, till the 29th afternoon. And here, Moon is right opposite. Jupiter is uh, also opposite. Mercury Mercury will be in the Gandanta though. Mercury will be in your 8th house. And in trying to Venus, Saturn and Mars in the sixth from the 6th house when moon is in the second house. So the emotions are tied towards finances, possessions, self-worth. You might just be spending a lot, you know, on uh, your children, or maybe you're going to be uh, traveling, you're spending on your job or job change, uh, or you have a job loss and there's a, you know, some uh, lag in finding another one. So you're going to be feeling quite insecure with moon here, Saturn, Venus, and Mars in trying Jupiter. So, Let's not forget, Jupiter is looking here. So don't take it, uh, it's not the verdict that, you know, you lose a job, etc. But you will find a job, in fact, if you've lost a job. So this is also because Jupiter is looking at your second house. And this is about your emotional fulfillment. It is about acquiring and appreciating material comforts. So you're going to be expanding on those areas. Maybe if you are already, you know, changing your house or you're renovating or, or you know, you're already thinking of investments, etc. So you might just come across people who are going to be helping you out with this. Experts will be there. You're going to be having rise in expenses when Moon is in your second house though. But surely this is going to open uh, the doors for the future, for uh, growth. So this is like budgeting, you know, you have to plan all those things as well right now. Plan your budget, plan your finances well park them well uh, then moon is going to be in your third house on the 29th letter half to the 31st and it's going to be aspected by rahu and saturn scorpio sign is under affliction because of these two signs uh, these two planets as well so now what is happening you're either restricted to talk or you're just confused in conveying what you want to convey so you are experiencing a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, there's a lot of tussle there's a lot of hassle that is uh, actually that you're going through on the 29th letter half till the 31st because Rahu you know confuses you you have that urge to communicate you want to you know convey what your intellectual pursuits are what you're feeling emotionally with your people maybe with your siblings with your neighbors you know you can have some complications to deal with but this brings about emotional satisfaction also and you might just learn something, you might journal, you might just write some poetry, you might just have some, uh, you know, uh, ideas that just, just come up and you just write them down. So that is something which is very positive. With Rahu, you know, you can be, you can write a fiction, <laughs> very, uh, you know, a, a novel, you know, which can be uh, like Agatha Christie, you know, used to. So that kind of, or uh, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> That is Rahu energy, not of Rahu energy, detective energy, you know. I would say it's Ketu energy, not Rahu energy, because Ketu is about integrate, integrate you know, things, very detail-oriented. Rahu is uh, is uh, smoke. So I will I take back my words. It's Ketu, actually, but not Rahu. Rahu confuses you. Ketu takes you to there, you know, to the root. That is why it is Mula. It's a root. So uh, that's what is going to be, you know, when uh, the, uh, when moon is in the third house. So emotional fulfillment comes from learning more, acquiring more knowledge, how you can uplift your ideas, how you can change things by your communication, travels. Maybe you will be having a presentation and you're just working on that. You're in isolation, you know, you're aloof and you're doing it. So all those energies are prevalent this week. And of course, uh, we can um, just be careful about our health from in between 26th till the 9th of April. This is the time period you need to work on your health. You need to follow a strict diet and routine, you know, just make sure that you are uh, taking good care of your health during this time. Maybe some exercises are required, okay? Coming to the next sign, that is Libra. So if you're liking the readings, please do write in the comment section. If you don't, even then you can write. If there's a lot of exaggeration you feel or, you know, there's lots that I have shared. So I can concise it also. But, you know, I can't stop myself. There are so many factors, you know, which uh, need to be checked. And, you know, I feel that all the planets should be considered here. 
So what is Libra uh, reading this week? Moon is going to be in your 12th house, first house and second house this week. And 12th house is the house of solitude and introspection, spirituality. You may feel a need to retreat from the world and delve into the innermost thoughts and feelings, spiritual uh, mantras, etc. You know, you just want to isolate yourself because you have an eclipse also there. You have holy. So you might just be, you know... Uh, some people don't like to play holy. I, I know so many people who just don't like to play holy. So you might just be in that isolation zone and eclipses as it is take you away from, you know, being the 10th Lord in the 12th. So this might just be that you're going to travel and you're away from your uh, home and homeland and your work workplace. So you're going to be in isolation when moon is in the 12th house. But yes, the emotional fulfillment comes from embracing and, you know, the... <clears throat> spiritual nature of yours how you can find peace you're in that pursuit constantly isolation of course since ketu has transited here you're already in the, in isolation you're already uh, in that solitude you don't want to uh, mix with people you know this is what libra is feeling right now uh, most of the libra i've seen you know they are going through all these kind of energies and when there is an eclipse also happening in your 12th house so it is definitely going to uh, you know uh, give you those enhanced energies even more so the best thing that you can do is that you know you should actually um, focus on things which you have things that you have rather than things that you don't have because this is disturbing you that oh I don't have this I all this is lost because Ketu in the 12th house gives this feeling you know of insecurity all the time there's some insecurity oh I don't have this I don't have that and when 10th Lord is with Ketu in the 12th house you will feel it feel that even more so uh, the best is that you know to make peace with yourself with your condition your state of mind right now if it only on Ketu Dasha Definitely, these are going to be enhanced. The best remedy for you right now is to work out. Physical vent is the best remedy for you. Journal, write down each and everything that you're going through on, uh, you know, in a diary. You can maintain a diary. You can just journal. You can write everything that you're going through. So this will be a good relief for you. Then moon is going to be in your first house on the 27th till the 29th afternoon. And that is something which is, uh, uh, you know, going to be giving you some emotional focus uh, and uh, self uh, on self-awareness, you know, your personal identity, your physical appearance. Maybe you'll be going in for a haircut or a hairdo or a skin related, you know, something, uh, some change that you're going to be making, you know. <clears throat> And also, you may feel more sensitive uh, as to how others perceive you. You'll be actually caring. Uh, you will get to know um, and that, you know, oh, I ignored these people. So you become a little more sensitive, right? You become more uh, uh, about, um, you know, how you can be more rather than self-centric, uh, be more people-centric. So that approach, that nurturing approach just gets aggravated during this time period. So this tra transit will bring about that inner emotions, you know, which actually affect you and the world around you uh, out self-care other people's emotions you'll be considering this might just be bringing about some uh you know uh, uh, work which is related to your job and uh, you might just be changing the perspective how i can do it maybe you'll be thinking out of the box i can complete it this way so you're very emotional you're very uh hard working right now you're just putting uh, channelizing your energies uh, from 27 to the 29th afternoon. Then 29th, letter half till the 31st. This is the time period when your emotions are tied to finances because moon is emotions, right? So it's just about emotions. If you don't have emotions, I think we are just dead. So when moon is in your second in your second house, so emotions will be tied to possessions, finances, self-worth, what am I worth it, whether I'm worth it or not, what am I doing here, uh, how my expenditures are, uh, you know, how I can plug them in, you know, too much of money is going out. So you're thinking about all that. So you're, you're budget budgeting now. So you're going to be connecting with your family and planning how we can just save the money, how we can plan uh, some, uh, you know, some uh, other sources of income as well, how we can grow. So all these are the energies which are going to play out. And Saturn is also looking here. Rahu is looking here. So Rahu is something which, you know, gives you too much of, uh, biased uh, opinion about your uh, you know about yourself and about your 
uh, financials also and your family members as well there can be some confusion uh in your uh within your family so you will sort out all all of that as well when moon is here it's better that you take the help of your family members and communicate with them so that you feel a little better okay and appreciate appreciate yourself and others rather than just uh all the time you know um in remorse or in regrets you know you just kill the moment live in the present whatever is gone you cannot do anything about it learn from it move on how is the future going to be that is also something which is uh which we cannot decipher that accurately so whatever we have right now at least you know enjoy it at least you know uh take good care of it whosoever is in with you you know you should actually respect and love and care them care uh carefully you know just be by their side be more nurturing okay rather than just you know getting uh detached and uh, regretful all the time no uh it's not worth it and uh, we do have um you know the uh, there can be some uh connection with a female counterpart uh at the workplace on the 25th or maybe you know 26th you can connect with someone and on the 27th 28th this can lead to some kind of uh, uh you know uh, physical relationship also 29 to the 31st you might just be traveling they can be that you're uh, reading a book you're writing something you're going to be meeting your guru or uh, some teacher during this time okay could be coming to the next one that is scorpio For Scorpio natives, this week moon is going to be transiting your 11th, 12th and 1st houses. So when moon is in your 11th house, there's an eclipse also in this zone, 5th and 11th axis. And Ketu and, uh, and moon is going to be in Hasta Nakshatra also. 24th afternoon till the, till the 26th, moon is going to be in your 11th house. Now, this actually is the house of social connections. But when Ketu is there, you actually get to know about the person who is actually befooling you. Maybe you will get to know uh, the root cause of the problem that you are in. So you might just, you know, uh, sieve away or you might just uh, leave those people who are pulling you down during this time period or your social connections, your friendships, your group activities. You know, you're going to be cutting down on all those you don't want to party. You don't want to be, uh, you know, enjoying life, uh, you know, superficially. So this is what Ketu does in your 11th house. You want to grow. You want to work on yourself. What am I doing here? So you have those aspirations and goals working now. And the core, it's taking you to the core. So which is why, you know, you will feel emotionally fulfilled. You'll be nurturing yourself people around you also you will know that yes these are the people i need in my life so this lunar eclipse is going to teach you this lesson actually 24th afternoon till the 26th then 27 to the 29th afternoon moon is going to be in your 12th house in the uh, uh, you know in the libra sign so this is like you know you're going to be thinking about how you can balance between work and life how you can be more spiritually uh, growing, how you can go for a retreat and how you can rejuvenate yourself, how you can start again. So all those energies, you know, like when you are in the solitude, what happens, you know, you think about things which you have done in the past. Moon in the 12th house means the cycle is coming to an end and the new cycle begins. So you're going to be learning from your mistakes, what all I have done, what all losses I've made, what all health issues I've gone through, what is my relationship with my people around. So all those energies will be too hyped up, you know, uh, will be highlighted during this transit of moon in your 12th house and you might be traveling could be that you're traveling also and this is also the time period when you're you know you're tied to your subconscious process dreams fantasies so don't i'm not saying don't dream big but you know be more practical rather than you know just in your fantasy world okay this is also uh you know that making castles in the air as we say so this is also about your uh, inner peace that you're working and looking for and this might just be a good time period to write to journal one second okay. 
So <clears throat> this is what is going to be. And uh, you must delve deeper into the realms which give you satisfaction, which give you uh, clarity about your future. Then moon is going to be in your first house, of course, on the uh, 29th letter half till the 31st. It's going to be uh, opposite, uh, I mean, aspected by Rahu and Saturn in your first house. So first house is the house of, uh, uh, you know, your um, your emotional uh, awareness, how you can nurture others. You will be considering yourself, you know, uh, maybe uh, want to spend time uh, making up or, you know, maybe you want to buy something which makes you go look good. You go for a hairdo or change your looks, buy some clothes. All that is what, uh, you know, you will be thinking of doing. But you must remember moon debilitates here. You can be confused. You can have some complication in your relationships. Uh, maybe you're not able to take good care of the people around you, their emotions. You're not able to nurture them well. You're not emotionally uh, sound because moon is, no, not the practical moon here. Moon becomes very emotional and the emotions are very erratic. Mood swings, as we say. So when moon is in your first house on the 29th letter half till the 31st, be careful about what you're thinking. It could be that you're thinking about something which is uh, not ethical because Rahu is also looking. Saturn restricts you. So you have cold relationship with people around you. Could be that you know, you're know you just uh, self-centric. So I'm not just saying that everything is uh, bad, bad, bad. But yes, this leads to some mood swings as well. You can be very, uh, you know, too much into uh, your, uh, you know, uh, expectations, you know, that, uh, oh, I am doing for this person, my partner or the people around me, but I'm not getting anything in return. Uh, you can be very nurturing kinds here, but you your expectations might just be a little, little higher. And uh, they don't get, if they fall apart, then you feel a little sad. So take good care of your emotions. Be more, uh, have that control. Keep a constant check on yourself rather than uh, blaming on to others. You can have some headaches during this time. Don't drive. It's not advisable. And uh, just keep a constant check, I would say. Uh, and maybe, you know, just connect with your gurus, mentors, travel. Maybe you can travel uh, to a place which gives you some peace, uh, vacation, you can just take a vacation, take a break, you need that, maybe you're burnt out, so you need to take a break, as it is after the eclipses, you know, it's very heavy, so you might just, uh, just break away from somebody, and you need that, you know, relief, and that calmness, and that recovery, so that's something which is going to be, your uh, partnership business is going to flourish, you're going to be meeting people, having meetings this week, You it is going to be hectic, but it is definitely going to be giving you, paving way to the newer, a newer and a bigger picture, okay? Be receptive. Coming to the next one, that is Sagittarius. Somebody has to do the timestamps. I won't be able to, <clears throat> okay. So for Sagittarius natives, this week moon is going to be in your 10th, 11th and 12th houses. Uh, you have an eclipse in your 10th house and uh, uh, then on the 8th in your 4th house. See, it's the same axis, but yes, uh, this is something which can lead to some complications at the workplace. Or maybe you will get into the depth and the detail of everything at the workplace now. 24th afternoon till the 26th moon is going to be in your 10th house. Whatever is your karma, whatever you're doing, whatever is your profession, right now you are worried about your public image, your reputation. You really want things to happen your way. You want anything and everything, hook or by crook. And uh, right now, you know, you're, that that drive is there. You're you're driven, you're, you're, you are you're looking for that success, your recognition. So you're going to be working on that. Workload is going to be heavy this week to start with. So you might just be uh, experiencing that, you know, yes, I have to complete the task, the goals that you have set. So you're going to be making a lot of changes in the policy strategies, how you can uh, improvise and uh, achieve faster because uh, the delays uh, are frustrating you. So you might just be finishing some tasks now and then you'll be starting something new. The responsibilities and achievements are definitely coming your way. 
Her responsibilities, of course, are growing. And then moon moves into your 11th house on the 27th till the 29th afternoon. It's going to be right opposite Jupiter, Mercury, and in trying to Venus, Saturn. So there's a lot of energy on your 11th house. You might come across people. You might just meet some new um you know, some influential people, your bosses, seniors, you might just connect with, or maybe you will be meeting some uh, partner who is going to be giving you emotional vent and emotional connectivity also. This is also going to be making you feel the sense of belonging, you know, that yes, I belong to this particular group. And uh, you might just collaborate, you're, you're going to be innovative, you might just go to an orphanage or an old age home to donate something you're going to be charitable you're going to be getting associated with those kind of organizations hospitals etc also ngos it's good if you do that because venus saturn and uh, mars are also in trying to this zone so you will connect with people who are going to show you the right path now jupiter is looking after all here it's a good time period to conceive to uh, pr uh you know to conceive after the uh, eclipse please don't I actually when give the mohurta, I avoid this period, of course, uh, if it's possible. And in my hands, if somebody comes for the mohurta, I do give mohurta for conception as well. So uh, it's it's actually you know not advisable in and around eclipses to conceive, okay? Or if you are already, uh, you know, if you are uh, pregnant, uh, you are already in that, uh, you know, uh, in that term. So you should actually just um, take good care of yourself, sleep the maximum time period when the eclipses are going on you should not do any kind of activities which actually can be hurtful or harmful to you later so just just a word of caution so then moon is going to be in your 12th house and that's happening on the 29th letter half and uh, till the 31st and it's going to be aspected by rahu and saturn in your 12th house so this is uh, going to give you Maybe you're going to be traveling overseas. It is about your investments, losses also, maybe some investors coming in from the overseas lands, or it could be that, you know, you're going to be in that solitude. You're introspecting, you know, you're just in that spiritual realm now. You're thinking out of the box, how I can learn astrology, how I can grow uh, spiritually, how I can be more emotionally fulfilling, how I can fulfill my desires, how I can, you know, be more uh, into... Um, learning acquiring some knowledge you know so you're in that mood and the mood is very very swingy <laughs> you're having a lot of mood swings during this time period so the emotions sometimes you know you do what sometimes you cry sometimes you start laughing uh, sometimes you connect with people sometimes you isolate yourself the solitude so all those things are going to be the theme this week and you're going to be feeling that those energies you know a lot heavy energies with this eclipse in the kendras so you need to strike a balance between your work and home first, how you can have good relations, how you can have, maintain the rela existing relationships, work on your health, on your diet by the end of the week, especially work out, go for walks, eat right kind of foods. I've also gained a lot of weight because of my health issues, you know, of late. I also need to work on myself, <laughs> though I'm not a Sagittarius, I must tell you, because people will start thinking that I'm a Sagittarius and I said so, but it's not so. So one must actually follow a routine actually you know that's something which uh, keeps you going and uh, helps you okay so take good care uh, in and around eclipses especially and uh, all the best coming to the next one that is capricorn so for capricorn natives this week moon is going to be transiting your um uh, okay moon is going to be transiting your uh, ninth, tenth, and eleventh houses. See ninth house when Ketu is transiting. You're you're very emotional. You're very philosophical. You have that, um, you know, that urge to get into the depth and detail of everything. How you can be more uh, on the acquiring of knowledge. How you can learn more. So that is something which will happen. That energy will be very predominant from twenty fourth afternoon till the twenty sixth, especially. You're going to be thinking about broadening your horizons, how you can be more fulfilling, how you can uh, break the routine and the mundane jobs and do something which is going to be more emotionally fulfilling, right? So this Ketu energy will give you that. The eclipse will give you that. Holy will give you that because we are heading to have Holy also. So, you know, these are all uh, reminder calls. 
Eclipses are reminder calls, something which you have not been able to complete. So this reminds you, yes, come on, you can do it. So never take eclipses as the bad uh, omens only. You know, they are here to guide us. Uh, the, 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 ultimately, they are the guiding lights. Because, you know, once there is darkness, they are the ones who bring darkness. So we should thank them. Otherwise, how will we know what is brightness, right? So I always thank Rahu and Ketu for whatever they do, you know, whatever they're doing. They are the ones who actually illuminate our lives with showing us the darkness, okay? So this is what, you know, this Ketu energy will be, you know, giving you more adventure, more travels, more learning, more acquiring of knowledge, more desire to, uh, you know, get, uh, get into that significant path. So this is that eclipse that you're heading to, which is definitely very powerful one as well. Seventh Lord is in the ninth house. So you're, you're going to be connecting with your partner, partner, and you are going for a vacation maybe, you know, and connecting on a deeper level. Uh, moon is going to be in your uh, 10th house on the 27th to the 29th afternoon and is going to be opposite Jupiter and is also in trying to Venus, Saturn and Mars. So now you're going to be, uh, you know, thinking about growth how you can work through your, uh, you know, career, your image, your uh, recognition, how you can be more successful in your professional career growth, how you can be improvising here in this arena, how people can know that you are the achiever. So there will be a lot of workload this week and you will be definitely get, uh, getting into that uh, uh, zone of, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, starting something new. Old projects finish, only then the new ones start. Strategy planning, meetings are there. A lot many people you're going to be connecting with, influential people, meetings with uh, with people who are going to be guiding you, how you can, you know, start a new project, how you can, you know, that modus operandi, you know, how, what is the future? What's in store? So all those discussions will be going on. So there will be lots uh, happening this week as well. And... Um, it's you who has to strike that balance as well uh, between the, the work and life. Also, there is a lot of emotions and ambitions attached to this time period. Then moon is going to be in your uh, 11th house on the 29th letter half till the 31st. And it's right uh, in trying to Rahu, which is looking at this zone and Saturn also is aspecting here. So in the 11th house, it's about the social connections. Moon is in debility here. So what happens, there is a lot of emotional combat that you have to go through. Venus is going to thankfully get exalted. So it is definitely very positive because it's a yoga karagraha which is getting exalted. So it will be a big time saving grace for you. You'll be very creative. You'll be acquiring more knowledge. You'll be traveling for work. And here, you know what happens, you might just have some social connections which might, not, might um, uh, be like a conspiracy. So you have to be very careful, you know. You're doing everything, but somebody else, you know, takes your cake. It's like that. So you need to be very, 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 very uh, alert on those areas. So when you're forming a good connection with the uh, superiors, influential people, or you're meeting people who are going to be guiding lights for you. So that is something which will be a protection. But at the same time, you must know who's who. You have to have that demarcation now because there are people who are just trying to backstab you and there are people who are not liking what you're doing, you're growing. So you have to be careful about all those energies as well. And collaborations, your goal um, achievement or uh, connecting with your you know people who are going to be very innovative. You're going to be just, um, if you are an engineer, suppose. So you might just innovate something very, very uh, fresh and new and very different. You're out of the league. You're thinking out of the box. All that is also working through. And also there is a possibility of coming across somebody during this time who might just be, you know, um, making you very um, uh, humble and, uh, you know, could be uh, that you are going to be uh, connecting with some humanitarian causes, going to uh, hospitals, NGOs, etc. So you might just meet somebody during this week uh, related to this zone as well. Okay. So uh, overall, it's a good uh, week for you. Mercury is going to be uh, coming out of the debility in the uh, fourth house. And it's going to be back and forth, of course, in Gandanta also this week. So this is uh, the time period you should avoid making any decisions as regards to your investments. Avoid. Because uh, at least for two, three days, you know, from uh, because Mercury is going to be in Gandanta from <clears throat> the 20th. 5th, uh, 25th, 26th, 27th. 
so you should avoid okay otherwise it's uh, not bad for you because mercury is your bhagya lord it's turning retrograde also so travel plans uh, visa pr etc if you have to apply etc or anything to do with business planning education plan so you must plan everything well in advance okay coming to the next sign that is aquarius For Aquarius natives, uh, this week, moon is going to be transiting your 8th house, 9th house, and 10th house. So when moon is in the 8th house on the 24th afternoon till the 26th, um, it's going to be conjunct Ketu, and there's an eclipse happening in your 8th house as well. And it's going to be right opposite Mercury and Sun. Um, so 8th house energy, Ketu is not bad there though, but you know what happens? It gives you too much of intensity, you know, in emotions. You might just be thinking about the depth and the details of everything. Something which is hidden might just come into limelight and might disturb you. Uh, or you are trying to conceal some facts and it just gets into the limelight and you feel little uh, that, you know, oh, why this happened. But definitely you will feel drawn to explore deeper emotions, how you can connect with your psychological insights, how you can be more into the, you know, uh, how you can come out of the fears or insecurities that you're going through so all those will be there and how you can handle uh, other people's money how you can be more uh you know um confident in uh, uh you know dealing with others uh and dealing with your own hidden uh fears your own hidden uh realms which are uh, you know which you 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 can't handle sometimes what happens you know we are not able to handle things uh, ourselves so we need people around us and we need people to help us out so you need that support right now okay then moon is going to be in your ninth house ninth house is going to be from 27th to the 29th afternoon in libra sign is going to be right opposite jupiter and mercury is going to be trying to venus saturn and mars which are in your lagna of course so this is a mixed bag for you actually you know lagnesh is looking here so your uh, uh, luck lord is looking here lagnesh is in the lagna very beautiful uh the <clears throat> trinal and the kendra connection is always the raja yoga okay so this is the time period you should utilize actually you know but why i said it's a mixed bag because you know you will be very impulsive you can make wrong decisions during this time period so you need to be really calm uh because you know what happens people who have a lot of aspirations what happens they will commit some mistake in haste so you need to calm down. You need to relax. You will have that desire to, you know, go the go getting, uh, the go getter. You know that instinct is going to be very, very prevalent. So you need to be very careful about your travels, about your journeys, about your adventures, about acquiring your knowledge. The thirst of knowledge, actually, you know, that's going to be exponential during this time period. So you need to plan well. You know what you really want to learn. What you really want to where, which place you want to go to. Suppose you are a student, you know, you're not able to make right kind of choices. You have two, three choices. You're not able to decide. You should seek help and advice from the astrologer, which direction you should go to. That is what is relocation astrology. So you should always seek help and advice from uh, the consultant rather than just making hasty decisions. Saturn is in the Lagna, Mars is there. So there's a lot of mixed bag of emotions also. Saturn is isolating, Mars is enthusiasm, Venus is, uh, you know, love luxury romance uh you know the you know the worldly planet so it's a mixed kind of an emotion that you're going through already but you are indifferent you are just isolating yourself also at the same time and you are very impulsive also so you need to strike a balance now during this week because we are heading to eclipses also first eclipse is on the 25th and the second one is on the 8th 8th of april so you need to be really very cautious about your money matters, about your health, about connecting with people, about exploring the hidden realms of life, your hidden realms, secrets, weaknesses, strengths. So you need to really figure that out. Okay. You re really need to work on yourself this week, on your emotions. Okay. And how you can be uh, achieving those goals that you have set. There will be a lot of workload by the end of the week, 29th letter, half uh, till the 31st. The moon is going to be debilitated in your 10th house. So this might just bring about, you know, that um, drive for, uh, you know, that competition, I would say. Sometimes what happens, it becomes uh, jealousy also. 
it turns into jealousy. If somebody has achieved something, you have done something, but you did not get the due. So what happens? You feel a little uneasy. So that could be that people are not recognizing what you're doing at the workplace and you feel very uneasy. So that could also be the theme. But at the same time, your emotions, your ambitions, your work, your planning, your uh, way of working is going to lead to that recognition ultimately. So don't one second. So you need to really take care of your emotions, how you can fulfill your cup. You know, if your cup is full only, then you can be the one who can give others. So think like that, that yes, I'm right now in that learning process. I'm going to be an achiever. I'm going to learn more. I'm going to do well. And then I'm going to be showing the world that yes, I can do it. I've done it. And now you can help others also. Okay. You have to work in a team about it. Uh, Mercury is going to be in Kandanta, so you have to be careful about your investments, travels. If you're starting any new education plan, you have to be cautious, planning uh, anything to do with your, uh, you know, uh, parking of funds, etc. So you have to be cautious about that as well. And um, uh, Venus is going to be exalted in your second house. Good for your financial growth, of course. You can get any promotion that you are waiting for, but be careful about your health. Okay. Take good care of your health. Coming to the next one, that is Pisces. So for Pisces natives, this week moon is going to be transiting your <clears throat> seventh, eighth, and ninth houses. So seventh house transit, you know, because you have an eclipse in your seventh house and one, one seven axis, whenever there's an eclipse, you know, this brings about a lot of changes. Chemistry and bonding with your in your relationship might just change. Suddenly you will find that, you know, your partner has become quite detached. You're feeling uh, you, you want to connect with your partner, but the partner is isolating or you yourself are becoming very demanding. You know, you can become very self-centric also. At times it so happens, you know, you think about yourself first and, uh, you know, others later. So that kind of a feel can be there with this eclipses time. So be careful about these emotions. You must feel, uh, uh, you know, uh, that uh, you, you must have that desire to have the companionship rather than demanding that companionship. So be more cooperative, be more, uh, you know, um, intimacy, intimacy, you know, is also required during this time and emotional fulfillment, harmony in relationship is definitely going to be the key. But um, and, uh, as far as your business is concerned, your partnership is concerned, this might bring about some uh, changes, you know, changes in strategy and changes in your uh, maybe business planning. You're going to be thinking of out of the box, something very different. You'll come up with some other businesses or some other delegates or some other investors. So that's going to change as well. Uh, it's just on the way because, you know, eclipses are going to be uh, on the go so you need to be planning everything well right now now itself lagnesh is at least in the second house it's a big time protection that you you know your finances are protected your uh, family is protected with jupiter in the second house and mercury is also going to be there so that's something which is very positive lagnesh is, str is strong uh, we don't have to worry about anything much uh, then moon is going to be in your eighth house on the 29th uh, uh, sorry, 27th to the 29th afternoon. So that's the time period the energy is pretty much intense. You know, you are thinking of transformation. You're thinking about shared resources. You're thinking about uh, how you can get into the deeper realms, how you can acquire more knowledge, how you can have uh, connection with people in a very psychological plane. And this will give you that trigger. You, you will feel uh, there are a lot of mood swings that you're going through. You're not able to make wise decisions. So you need to be very calm when moon is in the eighth house. You need to strike a balance because it's a Libra sign in your eighth house. So you need to come out of your hidden fears, your insecurities that you're going through. This might give you all of that, but you will be out of it as well because it's in trying to Venus, Saturn, Mars, so many planets in trying to this zone. So you might just be traveling overseas. You might just be thinking of changing and leaving this current uh, place where you are going and settling somewhere else you're already contemplating on all those things with Rahu in the first house it so happens since Rahu is here in the first house you're already thinking of shifting base so 
it could be uh, maybe without the knowledge of your family or without the knowledge of your people around you also. And you really need that um, emotional support right now. So you should share things with people around you and uh, heal yourself, heal yourself, heal others, uh, strengthen your relationship. Okay. Some new relationship can also be on cards. Children might be traveling overseas. Could be that, you know, there is some investments, uh, some, uh, you know, speculative income also on the go. Be careful because Mercury is uh, in uh, Gandanta and then will be going uh, retrograde. So be careful about your investments. Plan everything really well. Moon is going to be in your ninth house on the 29th letter half till the 31st. And here Moon debilitates. So this might just be about expansion, exploration, philosophical pursuits. You might just have a strong desire for adventure, travel, higher learning. All that is there. But you know what? This is something which you uh, have to be cautious about. Don't go overboard. Because you know what, uh, Moon is very emotional and going to the deeper realm or deeper emotional sign of Scorpio. So this might aggravate things and channelize things towards negative. Uh, you have to be a little practical also. You might just, you know, make uh, some wrong choices. Maybe you have to pick and choose a university and you choose a wrong one. So uh, maybe you have to go for, uh, you know, uh, doing some diploma, short courses, but you pick up something wrong. So be careful. Just be prepared that, yes, this is what I can go through. I must avoid or I, I can defer it. I can choose a day or two later. So plan everything that way. Because when you are having mood swings and you take any hasty decision or impulsive decision, it definitely you really need to regret it later. So whenever these weeklies I'm making, I'm considering the uh, position of moon. If it is in the eighth house, I say that avoid. If it is in debilitated sign, I say avoid making hasty decisions because moon is very emotional during this time. And you will have a lot of mood swings and impulsive decision making is on the cards any which ways with the eclipses in and around during this moon's ingress in the debilitation sign. So whenever these kind of connections happen in the sky, we must be very careful. We must be very receptive and alert all the time to the energies because they do carry some meaning if they are intense. So that means there is something which is going to happen in our personal level also. So if we are, you know, more, um, I would say that, you know, if we are more, um, uh, you know, uh, alert and uh, strong so I don't think so we will have these kind of issues we can deal with these issues very easily uh, eclipses are here to teach us something they give us they show us the light also ultimately so have a great great lunar eclipse ahead be careful and enjoy holy festival of colors and love and affection all the best everyone stay blessed om that's it